So that was quite a breathy yeah, entrance. Sorry. I don't know why. I, just, I feel a bit breathy today. All right. <laughs> also, do you know what I did? Because um, we have a very special guest on, which is you. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're looking not, surprised. I was like, oh, who? Head. Yeah, it, it's you. Um, you have an all round year look. Oh, it's yeah, it's 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 um, trans seasonal. What is it? That's what it is. Is it trans season where you you have to be quite tanned? I feel. Oh, without a tan, Jesus, I look ill. So you're going to to Ibiza bi monthly? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. actually medical. Is it? Yeah, yeah, have to get over there. Otherwise, how long were you in Ibiza for? Four days. Nice. Yeah. Just for he's jollies. just got back. He's just got back, and he's freaking out. That's why, because you're a guest. I'm, I'm trying to stay very normal, and I've got my arms folded, which I've just noticed. Which, <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, really welcoming. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually shivering inside. <laughs> Empty. Why are you being so closed off? I open don't up, know. man. I will open up. Second half. Well. <laughs> um, Olivia Cook, you mm. listen. You were, this is the second time you're on. The I know podcast. you guys are podcasting we, friends. I feel kind of left out here. So I had a little listen to the other episode you did. I really enjoyed that. That it was, was so nice. Oh my god! It, it was actually ben, a really good. App. By the way, it. buddy. Oh. By the way, jealous because you then went on. Alan Carr's podcast. Oh, I did, yeah. You brought a bottle of wine and you guys got drunk together. We were on Zoom, I know, but we could have stayed on Zoom and got, and got drunk. Oh, we were saying that because it was lockdown, wasn't yeah, it? it? And was. we were saying, oh, when it opens up, we'll get a beer. Never happened. That didn't happen. Um, and then, yeah, then Alan Carr got in there before. Well, I started it off because I brought a bottle of wine and then I, <laughs> just, and he opened the door. You happened to be drinking. You were like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's for this. It's for yeah. The, yeah. yeah, it was already on court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turned out a bottle hammered. of wine at home. <laughs> um, and I, I had this panic that he was sober in my head i just got it like oh he's sober now and so then he opened the door and i was like are you sober and he was like because well, i'm right. not yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he was like well right now i am i was like oh okay okay fine and then yeah he did the podcast podcast in like half an hour and, and then, then you stayed on and got drunk yeah i just got bat battered did you battered because also i wanted him to like me so much yeah do you have that as well like me where you just want people to like a puppy oh. It's the most irritating thing in the world. By the way, do you, everyone knows you as Olivia, but yeah, do your Liv. friends call you Liv? Yeah, they all call me Liv. So, so as, as buddies, I can call you Liv. You can call me Liv. I'm still on Olivia. No, you can call me Liv. Well, I've got my arms folded. So. <laughs> Olivia, do, Olivia does feel quite um, like, like head, head, head teachery. It's professional, right? It's professional. So, so you, you were starring in House of the Dragon, this amazing new TV show. It's the prequel to Game of Thrones. That is massive. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, you know, it's bat, bat shit. But also, you know, we had a really successful predecessor. Mm. And so we're following in their footsteps. So we couldn't have gotten those numbers without the eight seasons of Game of Thrones. And so we had big shoes to fill. Were you, were you pretty nervous? Yeah. You must have been. Yeah. Because of the success of... Yeah, there was a, yeah. They, they did, there was a massive pressure that, we, that we've all definitely felt. Um, <laughs> But then we were sort of like hermetically sealed in our own little love bubble while we were filming for 10 months. And then you give it over while you're doing the... Because of COVID. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, because yeah, of COVID. <laughs> hermetically <laughs> sealed. Yeah, yeah, no, you can't see anyone else. It's just <laughs> really? these people. Is and that then, what it is? You literally, could, you could only be spend it time with those people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were told on a few occasions, you know, don't... I know, like, I know you want to go out and party, but please don't do not, because we've got to finish this fucking and show. When, it, yeah. when you're told that, all you want to do more so is go and party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, I did. No, I was, I was good. I was good. <laughs> but, but you, but I, I, after the Alan Carr podcast, I heard that you, um, you turned up to your first day of filming Hungover. Mm. First day? Yeah, no, I never do that. I like I'm that. Set the bar. I, I love that you say you never do that, just to, I, I, there's, no, no. there is no way, you've never not turned up to set Hungover before. 100% you must have done. No, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, oh, I've never done no, it no, before. No, no, not to my first day, though. Yeah. Maybe like, you know, partway through when you feel comfortable. the job, when you know, oh, it's just a pickup of me, you know, looking out the window. Um, but yeah, no, I did. I did. And I, and because I, I was sort of safe in the knowledge that my pickup time was at 11 a.m. the next day. And then I wasn't shooting until the last scene of the mm. day. And so I was like, oh, it'd be fine. A few glasses of wine. What's a few glasses of wine between me and Alan Carr? Um, and then it was just bot bottles bottles of wine bo bottles of wine that I, I and I remember ringing my friend in the uber home and him being like i've never heard you that piss before <laughs> and then Were you talking to the uber driver as well yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. life story yeah, yeah. he's like please shut up yeah, and yeah. it was like it was from notting hill to kensal green so just <laughs> yeah, not yeah. far at all so i've got this big job tomorrow <laughs> um yeah. yeah and um 
And then, yeah, I went home. I tried to put my hair in a ponytail, fell over, ordered fish and chips, threw up, um, woke up <laughs> and had chipped my tooth in the process oh, no of shit. all of that. Really slightly. You but, chipped your tooth? Yeah. Chip my tooth. It's just only what, tiny. On the fish and chips. On, <laughs> on the fork or like falling down. Trying to put, I just really, I'm never that messy. I'm always usually quite together. But I think, this was like pre-game nerves because you had the big day the next day. So you're like, maybe. Oh, it was just, just heavily self-sabotaging. Yeah. But it was fine. I don't, I don't think, it, I don't, I'll never, I know which scene it is and I've seen it and you can't tell. So that's good. That, that is, it's just an amazing, because I remember the last time we spoke, um, I feel like, and this must have been, it was in the mix of lockdown. Um, and we, you, uh, Sound of Metal was just coming out, I think, mm -hmm. at the time. Which, by the way, holy smokes, you are just so, that is a heavy film. <laughs> and yeah, you said to me at the time, yeah. Liv said to me at the time, she said, listen, um, if you want to just uh, feel like really sad for an evening, <laughs> yeah. watch this If you want movie. anxiety. And if you want anxiety, if you want to be like, am I? <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. And then I watched it and I was like, oh boy, you really were right. It's really heavy, but your acting in it is just phenomenal. Oh, it's you know, it really, truly, it's amazing. But I remember you saying to me then is that you, you had something pretty big on the horizon. And did I not tell? I don't know. I think you maybe did tell oh, okay. me at the end, but you didn't say, but like, cause I hadn't been released that or, or. Yeah. I don't know. I f I'm forgetting the timeline yeah. of it all, but yeah, I I'm, I'm not sure if it had. I released. don't think it had. Cause, cause I heard that when you auditioned for House of the Dragon, you did it all across Zoom. Yeah. All across it. So I sent off self tapes. I auditioned for Rhaenyra and then I auditioned for Alison. Then I auditioned for Rhaenyra again. And then I finally auditioned for Alison and then had a Zoom with Miguel and Ryan, the two showrunners, and then was put on hold for six do, weeks. Do you have to make your own costumes for the Zoom? Because I was no. there, so you've got like a mop over your head. Just like <laughs> for different characters. Sorry, well, you think that people go to auditions well, no. and make their well, own costumes? She's doing it on Zoom, Emma, you know, she's got to get had, in character. No. Emma, who plays Rhaenyra, they had to put yeah. extensions in their hair because they had really short hair just so that, you know, HBO at large could be like, Oh yeah. Oh, I can see it. I can hair, see it now. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, I did. I did remember pulling a corset out of my out of my wardrobe and and fashioning like a shirt with a corset, so it looked a bit like medieval. Like you've made some effort. Like I've made <laughs> like... some effort. Um, but no, I mean I can't go to like Angels, which is a costume. Yeah, place. I love Angels. Yeah, I can't go to Angels, and it was locked down. It no. was twenty twenty. But, but how does it work with something like? So you get the call up. You have this. It's it's the new show that's going to be massive we know everyone who's watched game of thrones mm. it's massive they love it it's the biggest thing so then they want to make the prequel house of the dragon that's a lot of pressure um it's also one of these things which is um you know it, it's sort of a it, you, you can sort of be defined as these things and, mm. and i remember I, I read an article that you said that you were at some points when you were going for the audition you were a bit worried about being defined yeah i was completely yeah i was really reticent about doing it just because there's there's yeah, yeah, there's, I don't know, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because you don't want to bite the hand that feeds you, but also I'd worked solidly for 10 years and just been able to live this really lovely anonymous yeah. life whilst, whilst doing the, the things that I loved and also being um, um, revered somewhat in my industry. And, and, and that was all that really mattered to me. So then to do something this massive, which will be the thing, like you said, that defines me and the thing that I'm most known for. But it won't be the thing that defines you. Let me retract that. It's not going to define you. No, no, but for a while no. it, will, guess, it will be. I guess with the Game of Thrones, like the, the actors that came into that kind of were like fresh onto the scene, most yeah. of them. So they, they were like, that was the first that people got to know them. Whereas the yeah, audience have seen you in ones, so many yeah. other roles. So like you won't necessarily be defined by this latest role, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I feel like we're also giving too much credit to the films that I've done because not many people have seen those. They're quite, you know, they they're, haven't. They're quite, yeah, they, no, they have. haven't. Sure they, they haven't. They, quite big. they <laughs> haven't. Um, so yeah, I will be defined by this for a while, but then hopefully it'll allow me to do. And you know, I do love this show and I love all the people in it. But then also doing something this big does allow you to do other things that you really want to do as well. The, the, the hard thing that I think with your role, so you play Alison Hightower, the Queen, and. Mm. You have just, you know, how the audience are watching it now, you basically just appeared on screen because yeah. you come in episode six. Yeah. So you almost have to copy the younger Alison, right? You have to, you have to, so the actress who, I forget her name, her name Emily is Carey. Emily Carey, who is incredible. Yeah, wow, she's, she's amazing. A, she's amazing. You know, you, how does that work? Because you have to have similar 
mannerisms, uh, voices, all these mm. kind of things. So how does that work in terms of when you when you want to act? That, that was way? all the casting director and the and the producers and the directors. I mean, we never had a conversation where we would be like, well, I'm doing this. Uh, oh, really? You're putting your hands like that? Okay, well, I'm going to put my hands like that too. Um, Does it not? I would think no, that's what would happen. We were, we were not, not that we were like purposely kept separate, but we were filming all at the same time. So there was three units going on. And so there was a unit at the same time doing episodes one to five. And then we were also filming, you know, six to 10 at the same time. And so there just never was this like, I just didn't feel like I could impart anything onto mm. her. And also, you know, me at 18 feels so wildly oh different God, to yeah. me at 28 mm. now. And so they are, they do feel like two completely different characters. And what the casting director did so well is just find two people that have just, just a really um, tangible element that it's energy, all, that yeah, energy. energy that strings and, and it you both look. I mean, it's so an, similar, so yeah, similar. It's I know. wild. It's I know, I know. It's yeah. amazing. But I always think. So you step in at episode six, and I saw this very funny interview, and I can't remember. I saw it. Um, uh, maybe it was Jimmy Kimmel. Which, by the way, you're Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, get get at it. You don't want to tell you that you meet him as soon as you just walk onto the stage in front of the audience no for ways first, for the first time yeah and so i had to have a word with myself backstage being like just get a fucking grip were you drinking it again <laughs> no i wasn't i wasn't actually i want to drink it i know i need to i'm i'm doing sober october i'm doing very well it's the third <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i was gonna say <laughs> wait so you don't meet jimmy kimmel you just you just meet him on on stage and then have to have this like huge rapport with what the, that's know, quite weird i know and i just feel i felt as I was talking to him, it just felt like I was a meteor just hurling towards earth. Like the, the rate at which words were just fucking <laughs> spitting out of my gob. It was so horrible. Yeah, because I was so excited. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, please like me. I will yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, my buddy. I know. Hey, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, just a, just a Labrador, just like bounding towards him. Just embarrassing. And then what happens, you get into that zone where you keep talking over them. Not that you did that, but that's what I do. You keep no, talking do, yeah. over them. And then you're like in your head thinking, I just need to slow this down because I'm acting way too keen. But you're yeah. also rapidly analyzing at the same time. So I'm just like, well, that died. That joke just died. That died. And then you're like, there's nothing from the audience. And it's, oh God. Do you, do you find doing that stuff more nerve wracking than doing like the biggest? scenes that yeah really because you have to be it's you, yourself isn't it? yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just i mean and then you're being judged it's fine being judged as a as a character i can deal with that or like if someone says my acting was whatever in, in a certain scene, whatever it's fine that's their opinion but like being judged as yourself is just harrowing yeah, yeah. awful hate it. it is that is that um intimidating because as we said you know the the series is just enormous now and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and people are going to, more people are going to start watching it and it's just, you know, it's going to go everywhere. You know, what happens is, is that, you know, as an actor, you can hide behind characters mm. and that's what you can do. So you become different people and you, and you know, maybe you are, maybe you are that strong that I think with you, you know, from what I know you is that you're, you know, when you act well and you don't act well. So whatever goes around you, you're like, okay, fine. I could ignore that. But you are, as we said before, opening yourself up now to mm. have criticism or, or positives or from different things from who you are as a person mm. that's that's intimidating right yeah yeah because you can't change that that's so intrinsic to who you are and and i don't know i've always got a bit of a barometer for for um bull, bullshit and and fakery and i always want to come you up sense a lot of it in here today so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no 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 yeah, no, it's, going it's going wild right now no. <laughs> i don't know who you are alex you're not opening up <laughs> sorry i will <laughs> Just, just, let these, just let these shakes calm down. Why are your arms still folded? <laughs> I don't know. It's, I said part two, it all happened. What time did you land? Uh, late last night. What time? Uh, it was like 10-ish. Oh, so okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. You've had eight hours? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it's, I slept like probably five hours. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I had a lot to think about. A lot to you know, you? unpack in bed. And then, and then it, all I got from yesterday was I was like, watch all these interviews. Is it going to be okay? Then this morning, is it going to be all right? Like, it's <laughs> You're be... doing great, Alex. <laughs> I just, yeah, no, I'd forgotten my name. So, was... <laughs> <laughs> it, what is it? What is it like? So first day of set, you know, as you said, you, you get out there, you're, you're hungover. You haven't really met anyone yet. 
in terms of the cast, or have you met no, people? No, we've been doing um, rehearsals for like three to four weeks. So we knew everyone quite well by that point. But again, like we, you, we couldn't go out for dinner or break bread because we we're in the lockdown. So we just knew each other as professionals. Apart from me and Emma, me and Emma had gone for walks and been for dins and stuff. But yeah, so... So it, yeah, it's really. Do you rehearse? I didn't realize you rehearse. Well, you rehearse quite a lot. This is the most rehearse. Well, how were you? Well, I just I, walk on to set. And no, like, but I think. You, well, no, I think this is quite extensive. Yeah. This rehearsal period. It was amazing because then also Emma and I got to act out scenes from earlier episodes of when Rhaenyra and Alison were friends, and they had this like, you know, really intense bond, mm. love for each other, and so Emma and I performed. Just to get those like memories in our bones a little bit, which was really helpful because, you know, you have to have an intense love to then feel intense hatred. Yeah, because you other. do, because you are, you're so close with each other just in personal life, mm. but then you're, you're sort of enemies, you know, and how does that work? Because that's quite a hard... Oh, it's so, it's easy. Is I find it? that really easy. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we just, so the episode seven as today the 3rd of October yeah. in the UK and we have this me and Emma have this huge fight scene towards the end and we were pissing ourselves we shot it for five days and we were going absolutely insane like we were crying laughing <laughs> we could not get through it um <laughs> while you're on while you're on set, while we're on set just because we you just go, when you're shooting a, a scene that's 10 pages long for five days straight you just go Start to lose it, like go loopy. Bananas, yeah, yeah. and it was so hot. They had all the fires lit. We were in this huge costume. I'd put thermals on, so I was having an absolute heart attack. <laughs> do, you, do you like getting sweaty? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's always hot. No, all this hair as well. <laughs> it's, like, um, it's like a rug. I know. <laughs> it's I know. So hot. It's Everything's so hot. And I had this wefted. Oh my god, it was just so. And also, I've been wearing that costume. We'd shot um, prior to that scene in Cornwall. That's where we sh where we started um, for two weeks, and so and my costume hadn't been washed, and so I was just oh, nice. stinking. And I was going up to Paddy, being like, "Can you smell me?" And he was like, "Yeah, get away from me." <laughs> oh my! Yeah. It, does it happen sometimes where you have five pages you shoot it for ten days? Mm. Cut. Let's start. Cut. Let's start. Let's yeah, do yeah. that again. You next shot. Well, repo. All, the, all, all that. the characters are in it, so you've got to have you know wide mid close up at least on all the characters and then you know the big wides all around the room and and you've got to get the inserts of of certain fights and certain positions and certain key moments in the in the plot so yeah it does take a long long time that rehearsal period is amazing because i i thought that what you do you know th th this is the argument right which is so amazing between um acting with movies television compared to theater mm. theater you have the freedom to mm. do kind of what you want you rehearse it's yeah. ensemble together where you know for my limited knowledge is like when you go to a set like that typically you just sort of learn your lines you turn up and then you kind of go ahead and do it yeah typically yeah i mean i did it i shot a series for five years and i don't think we ever really had rehearsal time with the with read through oh, really? but we never had the rehearsal time you know but does that does that really make a difference yes but why does that make a difference then you just so if you're turning up to set and you're like this person is playing your husband all of a sudden you don't feel like you have as a as a as myself i don't feel like i have the chemistry in bill already to like hold that person's Quite hand like i feel so awkward meet your husband on the day exactly <laughs> so when you've got three weeks just to cement that slowly and a bit more naturally it's just so easy to you know be a bit more intimate with mm. each other no matter how that plays even if it's just you know hatred towards this person you, there's an intimacy that is hard to replicate when you just meet someone on the day it's funny. It's with acting, right? I saw this. Um, I saw this amazing interview with Rickman. Alan Rickman, yeah. amazing Alan. Alan yeah. Rickman. He was asked in an old interview that I saw of him, and he said, "I always get asked how um, give advice to young actors," and he says, "Well, my advice would be, don't act. Go and experience life." go to art galleries, go and mm. get judgment, go and get decisions, go and get opinions and understand what the world is yeah. like. Because then when you can go and act, you can really make a sort of, you can build characters because you know about the world. Yeah, it's a toolbox, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that exactly. You're drawing from. Yeah, completely. And that's what must you must have now. You know, if you go back to your 18-year-old self and compare to what you are now, you must know emotions and so many things different more. And you Absolutely. I feel like there's, there's, a, there's, there's a, a deeper well. But then I look back at myself at 18, I had so much confidence. 
I was so confident. I just thought I knew everything. Really? Were you really? When we spoke about it before oh, when yeah, I did yeah, my yeah. film and I did this an, is the greatest I did, I did, a, I did a scene <laughs> in my first film called yeah. The Quiet Ones. I did a scene where um where I had to cry and I was crying all day and I literally was like I'm going to get Oscar nominated. <laughs> but this like, you know, tiny horror film. Um, like I literally, you know, and and that has, the confidence has dissipated, but the, yeah, the wealth of knowledge for experience and emotions and, and my empathy has grown mm. for sure. Well, wait, that's interesting because I, I would say that you, you're not saying that you're less confident now as a part. You're more confident as an individual, right? Yes, but less sure of myself in my abilities. How funny is that? Though? that why do you it? not feel that though? Yeah, yeah, because I think we've lost naivety. That's true. And I, and I think, you yeah. know, that's what happens, right? So there's a great poem, which is by Blake, um, which is about innocence and experience. Yeah. <laughs> what, what time did you read this last yeah. night? Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. me say yeah. this again. Did your, did your PA send this to you yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. on the train? Ah, uh, that was my segue into it. Managed to do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. As everyone gave me a look. Um, no, but there is, there is, there's these two poems. There's a poem by Blake which is called Innocence and Experience. Two different poems. And the point is, is how innocence is broken by experience. Mm. And I truly believe, right, there is something magical about buying, being naive. When you're naive, you would like, you, you jump from trees, you um, think about building magic carpets. You, you, yeah. you just, there, there's no idea of something can't happen. Mm. Yeah. And so when you're 18 years old, you're like, oh, well, of course I'm going to win Lasco. And that, that blind <laughs> confidence is yeah. so magical. Do you think it's a loss of imagination as well? I don't think it's a loss of, no, I don't think it's a I loss of imagination. I think maybe it is slightly, but think about like how you used to view no, things when, when you were like five years old, like mm. everything was fucking amazing. Yeah. And then you get to like 30 and you've like built all these layers of kind of like, oh God, this is Yeah, you built all these walls. Yeah. Yeah. Which is actually a wonderful thing about my job because it, it's always challenging you to tear down those walls because yeah. you have to have an, a, a, a dearth of imagination to explore all these characters. And, you know, when you're looking at a tennis ball and being like, that's a massive dragon, you know. Is you've that got, what they use? It's just a tennis ball. No, it's yeah. a natural dragon, you idiot. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> I what don't do know, it's very good CGI. It's a tennis ball with a wind machine on it. So you're like, there's all this shit being flown into your eyes and you just stream and you're just like trying to open your eyes and have like a really captivating performance. Tennis ball. Yeah. That is, I, I find that just, um, I find that confidence amazing that you have. What, to fight a tennis no, ball? No, <laughs> but to, to there, there has to, for any actor, especially when you're doing something like House of the Dragon or, or, or whatever, where it's set in a certain period and it's mm. all these different things, you have to lose all sense of awareness yeah. and embarrassment. Yeah. Because you've got, how many people are on set watching you? 200? Yeah. You have to lose it all. Yeah. And you're wearing... You know, if you walked around those costumes in the middle of the day, people would be like, what the hell is going it on It takes there? a good couple of girls for me to lose my embarrassment and my awareness. It does, does it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, especially when there's a big, big old scene where you, like the one that is shown today where, you know, me and Emma are just screaming and crying at each other. And, you know, there's, there's, there's just so much intensity and so much passion and so much belief in what my character's saying. And then, but I've also just only met these people. Do you know what I mean? And like, mm. and I still, I do feel a little bit embarrassed. No, it, it's fine, but. It, it's amazing. You're so right. You know, that the idea of love and hate are so closely connected, mm. right? So when you love someone, that's why you can hate them so easily, right? That's why relationships can be so turmoil, right? Because yes. you're so in this like passionate moment. Mm. So to be such good friends with Emma, that's exactly, you're so right. You, you can easily flip that in your mind mm. to hate. Mm. And that's why it works in the show so and well. And also get in their face as well. You know, there's that proximity that because we're such good friends, I can get in their personal space and it can feel really intense. And I'm not afraid to do that. There's no fear. Um, yeah, it's great. It's so exciting. Also, they are the most incredible actor I've ever seen in my whole. I, there was moments where they're acting. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, they're so good. They're so good. It's amazing. What you're seeing this guy. God, that is... Yeah, I was taken out of it. I was like, wow. <laughs> Stop it. That's yeah. unfair. Yeah, yeah. Like Where did you a, learn that? Yeah, no, they, I don't think they learn. They just, they have. They feel it. They it, have, yeah, yeah. yeah. It takes 10 months or so to shoot something like that. And, mm. and, and I heard that, um, you know, some of it was shot in Spain or Portugal. Mm. Um, and, you know. Some Spain. Hot, yeah, Spain, nice yeah, places. And, yeah, gorgeous. And you looked at your schedule. schedule and you were in. Watford. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally was, just in so, Watford and Leeds. <laughs> I was so down to just be the social secretary and like take everyone out 5pm Negronis, like come on guys on the balcon. And, 
I'm yeah, just like <laughs> looking through the schedule, like, okay, so October, that's when they're going to Portugal, that's when they're in Spain. Let's have a look, look at my unit. Watford, Watford in the castle, in the castle, in the street. I was just like, I was like, you're shooting yourself in the foot here. Cause that, you're not gonna have a good time. Do, as as a, you know, when you're doing something like this, do, do, as a cast, you become really close. Yeah. So you become close and you connect yeah, with everyone. Yeah, yeah, because they're they're your family and 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 you know the producers and the directors and everyone high, high you know on you know up upstairs. Yeah. They all have so much to deal with, and and so we sort of become our own protectors and our own um confidants and just yeah a friendship is developed so quickly Deeply, yeah it? and it's so you're, strange you're spending 14 hours a day with them i know you know for 10 months that's a lot and so you go through so many periods of different feelings towards each other but it's just like any relationship but sped up mm. I, I, that's why i have a, that's why i love podcasting so much mm. you know you and i we met on zoom but i i have like a real soft spot for you and yeah. I, yeah, it's true and I, and, I, and I root for you all the time and, oh. everything. and that's that's only through like a moment of podcasting yeah. right so when you have that on set with these these women and men and whoever mm. it is and directors and producers and you 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 have this incredible it must be sad though when that ensemble mm. finishes and, is, and, and you almost have to sort of then it's like a it, yeah. it, it, that it, it feels like you're everything's you've breaking up again yeah. your, when i first yeah. started i felt that so palpably like the depression after a job finish because i was just i was mourning the loss of something that mm. i didn't quite understand yet and it was just that community and i'm so excited that we get to go back for season two. I know that's amazing. It is so fun. I'm so excited to see them all. Um, and me and Emma, I mean, we randomly ended up on holiday together like twice now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to the desert, went to Palm Springs together at the end of um, the American lot of the press tour. And then I was up in Edinburgh for the Fringe and then just saw them walking down the street. And and I was what, like, just by chance? Just by chance. No and then I was like, oh. And then we just spent the whole weekend. It was just, I love them so much. Um, That's so good that you had that connection. Oh, they're the best. That that Irish thing, was that, I listened to this on the podcast you guys did. Was that the seagull? Where you had seagull, to, yeah. <laughs> what was the seagull? I don't remember this. This was in, in the podcast you, uh, you guys did. Yeah, what was the seagull uh, thing? Seagull was your like entrance word to get into the Irish accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you... Can no, I can't, do, I can't. I can't do it. I was. Yeah, but you're great at accents. You, you can. You can. You no, know, you are. You, you've got. And and that that ear for that being able to do that is is amazing. I, I worked really hard on it with a with a dialect coach called Nick Trumbull. <laughs> with a seagull. With a seagull. <laughs> with me and just me and the seagull. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's the accent stuff is really really difficult. I, I do have to really pound it. Do, do you know? Not and not to keep going on this area, just because <laughs> I think it's it's so um, profound, right? It, did it take you it's just i love your do you know the great thing about you you're just your honesty and mm. and i think that's so insane it's the reason why i started this podcast was because i wanted people to forget filters mm. and i think we live in this age now with like instagram social media i used to watch chat shows and i still feel like they're like that today where every in the chat shows they know what's going to happen the jokes the things like that it was all just mm. all everything's all just set up and that frustrated me because we all go through shit things. We all go through great things. We all yeah. have our highs, our lows, all these different stuff. And we should never hide all that stuff. Mm. And and it's it's cheesy to say and all those different things. And and it, you know people always go, we gotta you know people have gotta talk. But what's more powerful is when actually you sit and you talk about your own experiences yeah. rather than saying we've got to get over that, but not telling your own stuff. And I just love it because it could be so easy for someone like you. You're high flying. You're you know. You're, you're fun, you're interesting, you're all these different things, you're beautiful, and it'd be so easy to cover all of that up and not talk about it. But, but you don't, you're, you're open about it. Well, I just don't think I can. I'm really bad at covering it and lying. And, hide, and lying, yeah. And I do, my mum is always on at me for... for um, Being she's, too she's honest. Like, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, you can't. How have you got so much time to be <laughs> yeah, honest? Yeah, she's so, like, yeah, she's like, you can't hold your own water, Olivia. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I want to be transparent, but then I also wish I had that like se sexy mystique that I feel like I need to have in order to have a career. So I have what, to be aloof, be aloof and be, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Am I feeling? Was that you just trying to be aloof? That was really aloof. good yeah. actually. Yeah. How do people be aloof? I, I, my little brother is so aloof and I don't understand. He's so. <laughs> aloof is such a weird word. Yeah, but he is, he's so, I'm just so, I'm Guarded. so the, oh, yeah, yeah, just. I'm so the opposite of aloof. Of aloof, yeah. I'm I know so my little opposite. sister's like that as well. She'll like take things to the grave. 
And I just, I cannot hold a secret <laughs> of myself. I will ha I have to tell everyone yeah. everything. Everyone else is as well. Yeah, yeah, if you tell me a secret, no, 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 no. I tell no, 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 I'm good at I'm good at other people's. You're secrets. quite bad with other people's. Secrets. I'm great now. I was bad. You, were, for a you period. used to be really? terrible. Really? Yeah. yeah. Was it, it co was gossip currency for you? Oh, it would burn <sighs> him. He would like, oh, I'd have to get it out. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it, well, no. What happens is that you you tell someone's secret and then you realise that actually that person's got really upset. But then you go, oh, that was actually a bad idea to <laughs> tell that. And they're like, well, why did you tell everyone? I was like. Well, I don't know. I didn't realize I've, you would care. And he's I like, well, like, I said to you, it's a like secret. With, Why are you telling with me? With you, because you, like, you wanted to you know, please people and you wanted to be loved. And you know, you'd be in a conversation, there's like slight silence. You'd be like, oh, I heard this the other day. I wasn't supposed to tell you. No, I wouldn't gossip like yeah, that. No, I would not. <laughs> I was gossip like I was that. There. I okay, was part all of right. It. But that must be hard as well, because if you know, especially with this series, it's episode whatever it is, seven at the moment. Um, and what is going to be hard about that is the fact that there is so much coming up, but you have to keep it a secret. And I've been really good at that, actually. Can I've you? been really, really good at that. <laughs> up until now. Up until <laughs> up until this moment. No, I mean, I just, I, I mean, I can't. I will be, I'll be murdered or something. Is that in a contract? Yeah, you, you will, will be murdered. Get, you'll murdered. get slain by a tennis ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, someone will just say Dracarys and I'll be, I'll combust. <laughs> Where, um, where's Roger Federer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I... Yeah, I know. I just can't. I'm not allowed to say, and I'm not liberated to say anything. Isn't that really tricky as well when you do things like this or interviews or whatever? And they obviously, every journalist mm. is always going to ask you the same thing. So tell us something. Can you not give us anything? <laughs> and you're like, well, well, I, I can't. And, and then, then I like, would worry that what, what's happened, what hasn't happened. So then yeah. I'd be like, I don't know. Has that happened? So I don't really know what to say. I mean, it's, it's such a shame because we were just heralding you for your honesty. And now you've closed right <laughs> I up. know, I know. Do actually, fold, I'm, a, fold I'm a charlatan. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but also I'm like, why do you want to spoil it for yourself? Yeah. You know? uh, oh, good lie. There we go. All right. You, it's like when trailers give away too much and I'm like, I already know the plot now. Like, yeah. There's no point in watching it. Also, it's a, there's a book. So you can go and, what, look, and read a book. You can go and Jesus. read a book or you can just like, you know, Wikipedia, what happens if you wanted to. The, the, the other thing I always find about, do you, do you find it hard to jump into different roles? Because you go from... The, you know, doing this to doing this to doing this to doing this to doing this. There's so many different roles you're playing, so many different characters, so many different lives. That's tricky to, to fold into these different people all the time. I find it, I love it. I love the break. I welcome it. I want to, because really? I, I feel like I get quite complacent and I get bored quite easily. And so I want to, I mean, I think it's it's quite trite to say, but the gift of this job is that you you get to live all these different lives in one and so i'm always really thirsty for that um and also there's like three months between three months at, at you know at least between mm. jobs where you get to you know just you know lower yourself into the into the role you know at a very leisurely pace mm. and so no I, I love it i love it and i just want to you know, it's really fun to be able to like dial up certain parts of yourself and dial mm. down other bits and see what you have in your arsenal to. Oh, and it's great. I remember when you get to do scenes, which like the emotional scenes, oh God, they're just, yes. they, it's so it's fun. Cause you're, yeah. Cause you're well. like, oh my God, I get to be angry yeah. and emotional yeah. today. Here we go. It's so Cause fun. you're experiencing that. It is pretty much real emotion. Like you're going to be getting that hit almost. It must get like addictive almost. Oh you're like, God, oh, well, yeah. I want to do that emotional I've one again. I've got a picture in my phone that is so dear to me that I wanted to make my screensaver of Emma after, after we wrapped day five of the big fight scene mm -hmm. and they are just like hollow. Oh, there really? is n like eyes so red and puffy, just like like days look in their eye, just nothing, nothing left. And it is quite nice. You do get a really good night's sleep afterwards. What? Because yeah, all the emotion is out. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, you're a husk. Yeah, it's it's great. I, I used to love that feeling, especially when I was eighteen, thinking I was going to get an Oscar. That feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But going home and I was like covered in bruises. It's like I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> what were the bruises from? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just, just me being like, no, I can do my own stuff. Just tripped over, tripped over on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. God, you must, yeah, you'd get depleted at the end. And you do, you, you, and it, it's like, I don't know, when you like built a shelf at home or whatever, and you feel like really like you've accomplished. I'm, I'm like, I've never this built a shelf. be a secret on how to sleep well, because I struggle. I'm just going to start crying. Before, before, when well, I get to bed, but that I'm is, just going to start. But that is held in emotion, you know, because you're, you're not getting your emotion out. I'm just going to sob myself to sleep. I think that might be... Yeah, that might be what I need. Oh, no, Liv is actually worried now. So I'm really worried. Yeah, 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 yeah. What happened in Ibiza? Oh, <laughs> yeah. How long have we got? 
I mean, we got. Hey, we, listen, listen. We can edit. We can edit. Yeah, can I? Yeah, can I die? Right, okay, J one. No, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever wanted to act? Oh yeah, I did massively. You, you did. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm I, too shy. I'm too much of a. The, the problem with me is introvert. that I really? throughout throughout my life, I I took I always wanted to go for shortcuts forever. So. Um, okay, it was an exam at school. How could I do this? Okay, I would learn everything the night before and I would just do it that way. Mm -hmm. Or I would always find, I'd, I'd find the easiest way to do a job. And so I loved acting more than anything. And I used to, I was in every play, went to university, did acting at university, um, wanted to be an actor, but didn't want to go down the route of auditioning and doing that and having right. that. So that's why I went and did reality TV is because I, okay, here's my shortcut. Yeah. Then what you realize with reality TV is it kind of stunts you right, right then. It's quite hard to drift into anything else. Um, but it's, it's, I, I'm like you, I love playing different roles. But, and but that's probably because of an insecurity. What's your favorite role that you've played? I, I played I played Rally in Journey's End. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I played. Was that at school? That was at university. A unit, I'm yeah. so en envious in such a good way of, of you because I, you get to you get to really understand emotion and figure out and this and that mm. and and what a life to lead that I you know. get to do these things. I was, I was having I'm a, so a conversation with my dad the other day and I was talking about acting and I, I sometimes struggle with it. It's just, I don't know, it's just such a like mad kind of concept mm. that you completely change and you become this role. And he was saying that it's, it's actually like your body uh, becomes the ultimate instrument. Like it's actually so fucking impressive to be able to like, you know, use everything about you to become something else and your dad said that yeah oh. it was quite prolific that is that yeah. is that is pretty prolific. this was in ibiza at 5am but... <laughs> you and your dad <laughs> <laughs> um, um li 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 listen you've got um you're doing so much and i just listen i you know i i you're so generous with your time and you really are and oh. and, it, and it's it's such a wonderful way to be and um i love the fact that you know you went through this period and then you came back and you you know how you reconnect with friends and all those kind of things. Mm. And you, and you realize like how important it is to have friendships and stuff like that. Um, and I value you as a friend and I, and, and, and yeah. I'm so, it, I see you doing all these different things and it's, and it's, even though we've, this is the first time we met in person. <laughs> Apart from that, my moped once where I, I drove and I waved and we yeah, were. Yeah, <laughs> I literally, we were, it was on Portobello Road and yeah. I screamed, Shoo! <laughs> yeah. he was like what the fuck <laughs> and then I was driving off and, and I was with my um, fiance and I went oh, it's just it's just Olivia Cook like that. <laughs> and she was like who <laughs> and I was so proud and um, yeah I, I'm, I'm very proud to call you a friend and, and I just know that you're going to keep killing it and keep doing everything oh, and, and everything and I can't wait to you to you win that Oscar because hey come on <sighs> I mean, we might wait in a very long time for that. But you know what? I'd be happy with a nomination. Do you know what I mean? Anything. <laughs> yeah, nomination would be pretty sweet. <laughs> um, when do you start shooting season two? March, April, I've heard. Wow. Yeah. But we've still got a bit of a chunk of time. time off, which is nice. And, and how many episodes are in this season one? Ten. There is ten. Because there's a, there people are saying there's ten or there's whatever, but there's definitely oh, no, there's ten. ten. Yeah, there's ten. I don't know. If, I don't think that's a spoiler. Oh, okay, fine. It's not a spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you, you spoiler, got, guys. Yeah, you, you had, had it. it. Got that yeah. one out of her. Well done. Mate. It's ten. Yeah. <laughs> I headline. Good ten episodes. <laughs> you know what? Some of the headlines that have come out are like, hysterical. Like what? Give us a call. Just like you know. Olivia chipped her tooth the night before filming. You're like, is that really worthy of a headline? Dun dun dun. dun, dun <laughs> she chipped a tooth. You know. Has any, um, have you had any crazy fans yet? No, not that I've... Not, not no. anything that, because the people get obsessed with these things, and especially because you play a queen, that would, that's a really sort of... Yeah, well, I think my get... character is quite hated. Mm. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Liv, listen, thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Good luck with the next series. Um, like I said, rooting from the sides for you 100%. Oh, Sorry it was so you. hot in here. Um... <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Woohoo! Yay! Thank you.